Men, women, folks with disabilities all pledging allegiance under the same proud flag to this big, bold country that we love. That's what I see. That's the America I know. And there is only one candidate in this race who believes in that future, has devoted her life to that future, a mother and a grandmother who would do anything to help our children thrive. A leader with real plans to break down barriers and blast through glass ceilings and widen the circle of opportunity to every single American, the next president of the United States, Hillary Clinton. more about some big news that broke this weekend. The State Department saying that Secretary of State Hillary Clinton fainted from dehydration after an illness and got a concussion. She has canceled one trip and ABC senior foreign affairs correspondent Martha Raddatz now has the latest on her condition and joins us from Washington. Martha. Diane, this was a pretty serious concussion, although she is starting to feel a bit better. She was homesick from a stomach virus after a long trip overseas. She apparently was so dehydrated she fainted, and when that happens you obviously don't brace yourself for the fall, so she hit her head hard. She was not taken to the hospital, but when she exhibited many of the signs of concussion, dizziness, headache, she was given all the appropriate tests to rule out anything more serious. Uh, there's more information coming in here. Uh, this is in the course of a follow-up exam today. The Secretary of State Hillary Clinton doctors discovered a blood clot had formed. And again, it doesn't say exactly where it had formed. Stemming from the concussion she suffered several weeks ago, she's being treated again with anticoagulants at New York Presbyterian Hospital so that they can monitor the medication over the next 48 hours. And they said her doctors will continue to assess her condition, including other issues associated with her concussion. Uh, they will determine if any further action is required. We haven't seen the Secretary of State in quite some time because she has been ill. And of course, there has been some criticism that she has not gone before a committee to testify about the situation uh, with the consulate in Benghazi, Libya. But as we know now and hearing from her doctors, uh, the Secretary of State is in poor health. So the bottom line is, I know Hillary can do the job. And that's why I am so proud, North Carolina, to endorse Hillary Clinton as the next president of the United States. Now to Hillary Clinton's health, the Secretary of State is back home this morning after spending four days in a hospital suffering from a blood clot between her brain and her skull. ABC Sharon Alfonsi is here with the very latest on Hillary's recovery. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning. The Secretary's back at home this morning and reportedly on the mend. Aides telling ABC News that she's been working, talking to her staff and to the president. They say she's eager to get back to the office. The Secretary of State tucked in this van moments after being discharged from the hospital, where she spent four days being treated for a blood clot in her head. Overnight, Clinton security detail seen arriving at her home in Chappaqua, New York. Daughter Chelsea later tweeting, grateful my mom discharged from the hospital and is heading home. Even more grateful, her medical team confident she'll make a full recovery. The secretary left the hospital briefly earlier in the day, hand in hand with her daughter and her husband, former President Bill Clinton, to have tests at another part of the sprawling hospital campus. A few hours later, she was released. The long-term prognosis for someone who's had a clot in, in this vein is, is very good. Neurosurgeons tell me that three to six months of anticoagulant is, is the norm. Uh, and then if her scan is clear at that point, she'll be off the drugs and can resume a, a full and active life. Life. The health scare has sidelined the secretary since mid-December. This, the first time she's been seen in public in more than three weeks. But a spokeswoman says Clinton has been, quote, quite active, even from the hospital, in touch with State Department aides, dealing with foreign policy issues, making calls and reviewing paperwork. Aides say she's eager to get back to the office, but doctors say she may be limited to what she can do. I expect that they're going to do an evaluation to see, is she one of those people who has a clotting disorder? This is her second one. And I would be very nervous about long flights until I sorted out whether or not she was at risk for, for this happening again. This is very improbable. <laughs> this is not an interview I ever expected to be doing. Um, but I understand, Mr. President, this was your idea. 
Why did you want to do this together, a joint interview? Well, the main thing is I, I just wanted to have a chance to publicly say thank you, because uh, I think Hillary will go down as one of the finest Secretary of States we've had. Uh, it has been a great collaboration uh, over the last four years. Um, I'm going to miss her. Wish she was sticking around, uh, but she has logged in so many miles I can't begrudge her one to uh, take it easy for a little bit. Uh, but uh, I, I want the country to appreciate uh, just uh, what uh, an extraordinary role she's played during the course of uh, my administration. And uh, a lot of the successes we've had internationally have been because of uh, her hard work. There's no political tea leaves to be read here? We don't have any tea. We've got some water here, the best I can tell. So when I got to Chicago and he asked me if I would consider being his Secretary of State, I immediately said, oh, Mr. President, there's so many other people. Let me give you some other names, because it just took me by surprise. But he is pretty persuasive, I'll tell you that much. And uh, he, he kept saying, well, I want you to think about it again. I want you to <laughs> wait a minute. Don't, make, don't give me a final answer. I'll tell you what I finally thought. I thought, you know, if the roles had been reversed and I had ended up winning, I would have desperately wanted him to be in my cabinet. So if I'm saying I would have wanted him to say yes to me, how am I going to justify saying no to my president? I saw her testify before Congress wearing the glasses she's been wearing. Well, they turn out to be another consequence of that serious concussion and blood clot. ABC's chief White House correspondent Jonathan Carl tells us what the administration confirmed today. We learned something new today about what Hillary Clinton was going through when she gave that tough, emotionally charged testimony on Capitol Hill this week. What difference at this point does it make? Those glasses she was wearing were no fashion statement. If you look closer in the left lens, notice those vertical lines. Those lines are an indication she is still dealing with side effects from the concussion she suffered after falling six weeks ago, affecting her vision. And values. I mean, one of our values is we bring everybody home off the battlefield the best we can. It doesn't matter how they ended up in a prisoner of war situation. It doesn't matter? It does not matter. We bring our people home. How is your health? It's very good, thank you. How serious was it? It was, you know, it was, a, uh, I think, a serious concussion. But Hopefully. the clot in addition, if the yes. clot had dislodged... Well, can I tell you, that's what's, that, that was a scary point. You I had rested. trouble with vision. I, I had, because of the force of the, of the fall, I had some, I had double vision for uh, a short period of time and I had some dizziness. Did you have trouble talking? No, none of, no, I had no, I had no problems. The only thing I had. Headaches? No, I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't have any of that. I didn't, I, I felt fine and I felt it was kind of silly that I was supposed to stay in bed. I, I ran into Congressman uh, Paul Ryan at the inauguration last year. And I had read, he was this great athlete. And I said, Congressman, did you ever have a concussion? He goes, oh, yes. He said, I had several, I think three. And the last one was serious, but my mother was smart enough to make me stay in. Because what happens to athletes, soldiers, young people in car accidents, all the reasons why people get concussions, is they kind of shake it off. And, and I felt like, you know, I can, I can get back up. I can go to work. And the doctor said, no, you're going to stay and rest because then you will have a complete recovery. So fast forward, I go home for Christmas, go to New York for Christmas, and I want to go back to work. And so my doctors say, okay, let's just do um, you know, an MRI to make sure that everything's healing as we think it is. So here's what they say. They say, the good news is the concussion is totally resolving. Like we told you, it's going to be fine. The bad news is you've developed a clot behind your right ear and you must immediately go to the hospital because we have to immediately put you on blood thinners. Because you'd had a clot in your right leg before I when you were traveling. I Are have. they related? Yes. So uh, blood thinners now. Blood thinners, yeah. yeah. For life. Probably, but I don't mind because I don't ever want to have to go through that again. So no lingering effects? No lingering effects. Of any kind? No. Nope. So you would release your medical records if you ran for president? I would do what other candidates have done, absolutely. And what would you like to say to Karl Rove about <laughs> your brain? That um, I know he was called Bush's brain in one of the books written about him, and uh, I wish him well. <laughs> <laughs>
about health care. We need to make what we've got work really well and improve it and get the costs out of a upward spiral of a upward spiral Carolina to see why so many young she went to South Carolina to see why so many young African American boys I mean young teenagers were being jailed for years with adults in men's prisons and she filed a report on that which led to some changes too always making things better here again are David Muir and Martha Reds. Welcome back tonight. As you can see, we have a packed audience here in New Hampshire, and we're going to continue. We've already had a spirited conversation here at the top of the broadcast about ISIS, about the concerns of terror here on the home front. And as we await Secretary Clinton backstage here, we're going to begin on the economy. We want to turn to the American jobs, wages, uh, and raises in this country. And do we believe Secretary Clinton will be coming around the corner any minute? But in the meantime, we want to start with this eye-opening number. And Senator Sanders, this question goes to you first anyway. In 1995, the median American household income was $52,600 in today's money. This year, it's 53600 That's 20 more years on the job with just a 2% raise. In a similar time frame, raises for CEOs up more than 200%. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to continue here. You are so indefatigable. I do admire that about you, Dan. I really do. What was your I reaction really when you heard that President Obama was going to endorse you? It was great. It was great. I mean, it was a, it was a wonderful, um, meaningful endorsement in every way. And I was I very proud of President. <laughs> <laughs> Did you talk about vice presidential possibilities with Senator Warren? You guys have got to try the cold chai. Always making things better. Hillary Clinton, and you saw that. Did you saw that where she basically short-circuited? She said, she did. It wasn't a press conference, because that's around 250 days. But it was in front of some friendly reporters. They asked her a very easy question, and she short-circuited. She used the term, short-circuited. She took a little short circuit in the brain, and she's got problems. I mean, if we had real people, this would be a real problem for her. To send Catherine Cortez Masto to the United States Senate. are here to protest Trump because Trump and his kids have killed a lot of animals. Represent inmates. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> 
<coughs> too much to say. A lozenge. <coughs> That's been <coughs> Wow. <coughs> Thank you, Hazel. <coughs> <clears throat> that's been part of my mission <coughs> and representing poor people through the Legal Services Corporation it was about making people's <coughs> lives better It was around 4 a.m. on a Sunday. 4 a.m. on a Sunday. 27-year-old Seth Rich was in this very neighborhood, telling his girlfriend over the phone he'd be home soon. He was about a block away when he was stopped in his tracks, right here at Flagler Place. Police patrolling the area heard gunshots and later found Rich conscious but shot multiple times, including at least once in the back. He later died at the hospital. 18 days later, police tell me there are still no witnesses, no suspects, and no motive. I spoke to a worker here at the store behind me. She tells me they turned their surveillance camera footage over to police, but have no idea if their cameras caught the crime. In the American political lexicon, there's such a thing as the October surprise. The stuff that you're sitting on, is, is an October surprise in there? We Do you even know what you're sitting on? WikiLeaks never sits on material. Uh, our whistleblowers go to significant efforts to get us material and often very significant risks. As a 27 year old who uh, works for the DNC, who was shot in the back, murdered uh, just two weeks ago uh, for un unknown reasons as he was walking down the street in Washington. So that was, that was just a robbery, I believe, wasn't it? No, it's, there's no finding. So uh, what that's are you the suggesting? Sort of, what are you suggesting? What, I'm suggesting that our sources uh, take risks and they, are, they become concerned uh, to see things occurring uh, like that. But was he one uh, of your sources then? I mean... We don't comment on who our sources but are. Why but why make the suggestion about a young guy being shot in the streets of Washington? We will disrupt their efforts online to reach and radicalize young people in our country. It won't be easy or quick, but make no mistake, we will. Prevail. Now, Donald Trump. Donald Trump says, and this is a quote. We got to get back on schedule. You guys calm down. <laughs> Look. I have lived a long, full, blessed life. It really took off when I met and fell in love with that girl in the spring of 1971.
Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>